Excellent job, Paul. Thank you for the singing this morning. And good morning, Holiday. Welcome uh, to the Holiday Church of Christ this morning. Uh, it's wonderful to have so many visitors this morning. I just want you to know that you're our honored guest uh, this morning. Uh, Brother Bob has mentioned a few things that are upcoming in our lives. Uh, Shauna and I, as we partake uh, in this journey together, uh, just continue to, you know, uh, prayer is, is the one thing that has meant so much to us all. Uh, and, it, and it always is, every single day. But just thank you for the prayers that you have uh, have given to us and just uh, continually do so as, as Wednesday is approaching. I think a couple have come to me and asked me, what uh, you know, what am I feeling? You know, am I excited? Am I nervous? You know, am I, what are these emotions that come to you during this time? I guess I would think I'm very excited. I am very excited. I, I just cannot wait. Uh, when we found out the day that uh, Thomas is to come into the world, I just could not stand it, I'll tell you. And uh, just uh, just continually, uh, I think that uh, Shauna's got the, you know, the nervousness part, so I'm just going to leave that with her, and I'm going to get the excited. Maybe that will balance each other out somehow. But um, just to appreciate your support, though, and thank you for that. Let's go ahead and get on in to the lesson this morning. I do want to welcome, though, each one of you to Holiday Church of Christ to a friendly church in a not-so-friendly world where everyone is someone. There are no big eyes or little U's here this morning. And I pray that if you're visiting with us that there's something that might help you in your walk with the Lord. And if you're not a member of the Lord's church this morning, I pray that something might help you in making a decision in becoming a child of God this morning. And if you're not a child of God this morning, you might be asking the question, what must I do to be saved? Well, let me tell you a little bit about the church of Christ this morning. We speak where the Bible speaks and we are silent where the Bible is silent. We do not add to God's Word, nor do we take away from God's Word. 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us to test all things. Hold fast what is good. Do you know what is good? Do you know what is right? Do you know what is wrong this morning? You'll notice this morning as I was standing back there that I'm not called reverend. There's nothing, anything reverend about me. I'm just a repentant sinner saved by the grace of God. Psalms 111 and 9, holy and reverend is His name. You'll notice this morning that we partook the Lord's Supper. This isn't something that we do on just the first Sunday of the month, the second, but it is something that we do every first day of the week because the Word of God has commanded us to do so. In Acts 20 and 7, now on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to part the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. And we do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Savior in Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out to many in remission of sins. And he says that we are to do it until he comes again. 1 Corinthians 11 and 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. You'll notice this morning that we don't have any mechanical instruments beside me this morning. We do not have mechanical instruments here this morning because the Word of God has not authorized us to do so. In Ephesians 5.19, speaking to one another in Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with making melody in your heart to the Lord. In Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell within you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to God. But I want you to know it is by the grace of God that you're here. It is by the grace of God that you're able to walk through those doors back there this morning. It is by the grace of God that you're able to hold that book in your hand this morning. It is by the grace and mercy of God that unmerited favor. It's not what you have, it's who you have, and it's because of Him that we're above ground this very morning. We should be privileged knowing that God would use us to do the will of God, each one of us. And that's why I'm excited this morning to tell you that there are no big eyes or little U's. It is the church that you can be added to, the body of Christ to live, and there's no one that can put you out. We should be privileged this morning that God would use us to do the will of God. Galatians 6 and 10 says, So then as we have opportunity, let us work that which is good toward all men, especially towards them that are of the household of faith. 
because he says there is going to time, come a time when we won't be able to do the certain things that we once were able to do. So take it, don't take it for granted this morning, the opportunity. Thank God for every opportunity that you do have. The title of the lesson this morning is entitled Hearing, Learning, and Growing. Which one are you doing today? Our text comes from 2 Peter 3.18. Thank you, Brother Paul, for reading that, uh, uh, Tom, for reading that this morning. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forevermore. And forever. Amen. Christians today must be willing, eager, and serious about spiritual growth. The Bible teaches of its importance. It stresses of the importance of how it impacts your life and the lives around us. So this morning we're going to talk about Christians' need to hear, learn, and grow. And we're going to break it down into these five words this morning. Growth, hope, contentment, rest, and wisdom. It is easy to see when someone progresses through school. You see them gain the knowledge of the alphabet. Soon they start putting those letters into a word. And pretty soon they, they turn that word into a sentence. And pretty soon they turn those sentences into paragraphs, essays, papers, and so on and so on. The grade level determines your ability as well as your understanding. But even so, in another sense, we have a school of hard knocks. Where the tuition is free, and you get a degree, and we'll figure it out as we go, okay? <laughs> Which I have attended a few times myself. Me and Andrew were putting uh, uh, Thomas's crib together, and we come to a piece that we just come up just a little short connecting this other piece together. And we paused, and we looked at each other, and we said, we've put that piece on 50 steps back. We're going to have to take this whole thing apart. <laughs> But uh, just to come to find out, we had, we had to turn that piece around and put it on there. Read instructions carefully is what I'm saying. Okay, we need to read instructions carefully. Whatever school you attended, we know that growth is inevitable. <clears throat> if it be good or bad, we know that we are moving in a direction that gets us to where we want to go. But as we look in the Bible this morning, it shows us the way that we should be moving. The Bible teaches us truth that is above all, and it shows us a life to live. Growth is a, not, it is a dynamic and ongoing process throughout our lives. It requires intentional effort, reflection, and adaptation. By setting clear goals, adopting growth, a growth mindset, building good habits, and seeking support, we can achieve meaningful progress and personal development. Okay, embracing growth not only enriches your own life, but it also positively impacts the lives of those around you. I want to share with you a story this morning, and I'm just going to read this story here. Once a man on vacation went to a shop, and he asked to see the most beautiful and obviously very expensive cup on the top shelf. He exclaims, this is the most beautiful cup I have ever seen. The cup said, I wasn't always this pretty. Once I was just a lump of red clay. The master took me and rolled and mashed me. It hurt. It hurt a lot. I asked him to stop. He just smiled and said, not yet. The spinning began. Oh, my head. The master was still pushing and pulling on me. Stop, I yelled. Not yet, he replied. The motion eventually stopped. The spinning in my head did not. Then I was put into an oven. It was hot. I did not like it. Through the window, I could see the master. I yelled, let me out. Let me out. I could see him mouth these words. Not yet. That ordeal was finally over. I cooled off. The master picked me up. It felt so good to be in his hands. Then he started painting on me. At first it tickled, but the fumes of the paint became overwhelming, nauseating. Stop! Please stop! I pleaded. 
I did not understand the smile on his face when he once again said, Not yet. Then back in the oven, hotter than before, I cried out, Master, please let me out. Stop the heat. I can't take any more. I saw him say, Not yet. Eventually, I was taken out of the oven and I slowly cooled off. The master came smiling. I said, Master, I have been through a lot of pain. The master replied, I know you have, but it was necessary. He picked me up. What a beautiful cup, I exclaimed. This is you in the mirror, the master said with a smile on his face. I said, that's me, but I'm just a lump of red clay. The master said, yes, but you yielded to me and allowed me to lovingly change you. Was it worth it? Yes, I replied. Before I was ugly, useless, and worthless. And in your hand I became beautiful, useful, and of a high price. Jeremiah 18 and 4 says, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Growth is taking an assessment of self. Growth is learning to adapt to change, seeking knowledge, even when it can be hard to hear sometimes. There are times in our life where we don't want to listen to things that the Word of God teaches us, do we? Because it tells us that we're wrong. It tells us we, we shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't think like that. Growing is overcoming challenges that we face in life, but also embracing the failures that come with it. 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 15, it says, But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scripture, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Just as important as it is to know what we feed our bodies to make us and to keep us healthy, it is just as vital and important to know what we're feeding our spirit, if anything at all. Second Timothy makes it clear our role, that the role Scripture plays in our life and our spiritual growth, the foundation it makes in our lives that lead us, leads us to salvation. Now, if we look at this a little bit closer, Paul is urging Timothy to remain steadfast in his faith in these ways. Continue what you have learned. It means that we persist in the course of direction, even despite its difficulties and hardships that may come in this life. Use reliable teaching when it says in verse 14, knowing from whom you have learned them. Highlights the importance of credible, trustworthy teachers. And that we get our information from the Holy Scripture early on to help guide us through life. I was walking through the hallways just a moment ago in Bible class and I heard teachers teach and I heard kids listen. What a beautiful thing that that is when you walk into these halls and you hear the growth, the learning. We call it Bible school, don't we? Bible school. We're going to Bible school. Just like you go to grade school, we go to Bible school. As expressed, growth can be difficult, but it leads us to living our lives out as God has intended us to walk. Growth in Christ helps us to navigate life's challenges. Do we want to do it alone? Surely not, because we know we can't. Growth. What about hope this morning? Hope. Not just, uh, well, I, I hope it doesn't rain today. I, I've got a mow the yard. Or, well, I hope that stain comes out of my shirt. I just bought this. This is a brand new shirt. I'm talking about the hope that Christians have. Let's look at Romans 15 and 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of Scripture might have hope. When Christians open this book, we should read it with confidence. Not with just some wish or optimistic outlook, but a deeply rooted assurance 
that God is going to do what He says that He will do. The promises that God gives us will not fail. We may fail at times, but God will not fail. Amen. When we look at Romans 15 and 4, we see that not only do we learn things in the New Testament, we also learn things from the Old Testament as well. I remember looking at this scripture back when I was younger thinking that that is what we're talking about here, the things that uh, Chase talked about on Sunday night, last Sunday night, Elijah and Elisha, the dynamic duo. Excellent lesson he had there, but we talked... Uh, a lot about from things from the Old Testament because we learn about God's character. We learn about the things that, uh, to, to help us understand the nature of God. Things He likes, things He don't like. The right choices that we can make in life and the wrong choices that we can make in life. We learn about hope in Jeremiah 11, or 29 and 11. Isaiah 40 and 3, Psalms 33 and 18. We even sing a song from Lamentations 3, 21 through 23. We learn about hope. What about contentment? Contentment. Scripture calms our soul. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Contentment in the Bible is often overlooked. We mask it by what the world thinks of contentment. For example, I'll be content once I get that promotion. Or, the secret of contentment is knowing how to enjoy what you have. But most people can't enjoy what they have because they're too busy worrying about the things that they don't have. The problem that we have with this is that Scripture does not teach contentment in this way. Scripture tells us, first of all, that we have to learn to be content. Verse 11, For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. We learn that true contentment is not something that we can purchase, not something that we can restore, not something that we can clean up, not something that we lack here on earth, but rather a learned process and reliance on Christ's strength rather than our circumstances. Said in a different way, we learn that we rely on Christ's strength rather than something we feel like we can gain here on earth. And what I mean by that is that we are content with God's provision, as seen here at Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Also, also Matthew 6, 31 through 33. We are content with what we have, Hebrews 13 and 5, 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 8. We are content through trust in God. Psalms 23 and 1, Psalms 34 and 10. We are content in every circumstance. Look this one up. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10 and read it. I pray that we all learn contentment in this way. I hope and pray that the, as the Word of God instructs us to what this Word means. The last two words that I have for you this morning are rest and wisdom. Rest and wisdom. Let's look at Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We've heard this verse, I'm sure, many of times. We know that life is full of stress, worry, busyness. Just when we think that we can't handle enough in our life, there seems like there's something else that's piling right there on top. We're barely hanging on by the sheer weight of it all. Matthew 11 and 28. It invites individuals to find relief. 
from their weariness and their burdens by coming to Jesus. He offers rest and a lighter yoke compared to the demands of life. By accepting His invitation, we can learn from this, His example, embrace His teachings, and Christians can find true inner peace, spiritual rest. What a beautiful thing that that is for us today, knowing that what we can do. Finally, wisdom. And now this is where we started this morning, talking about what school we attend. Do we attend the school of hard knocks or something else? But here's the thing about wisdom. It seems like the more that we know, the more understanding that we have, the more uh, circumstances that we go through, the, the more sometimes that we realize that we just don't know or questions that we do have. And not saying the Bible is incomplete. We have all things that pertain to this life, Second Peter 1 and 3. But I think that is what's so amazing about the Word of God, that is that it teaches kids, it teaches young teens, it teaches adults. At whatever age or stage of life that you are in, the Bible has something to offer for you. When's the last time that you've been at home and just realized, well, where's my Bible at? Let's, let me look at that. As Eric said, we need to break those pages Hearing, learning, growing. Which one are you doing today? I hope that we are doing all three. As Christians, I hope that I have expressed to you the importance, the significance, and the diligence in these works. Scripture teaches us growth, hope, contentment, rest, and wisdom. The Bible offers so much for us today. Don't take it for granted that the opportunity that you have that we started this morning, the opportunity that you have, we've heard. Are we growing? Are we learning? We know that Christ and the sacrifice that He gave on the cross for our sins for the remission of sins. What a wonderful opportunity that we have. Don't go another day thinking about what you should do when you should. If you're in need this morning, if you're in need of the Lord's invitation, if you're subject to baptism, the forgiveness of sins, if you've been a Christian but you have fallen away and you've made the choice to be here this morning and you're thinking that well, Christ and all the things that I've done today, He will not accept me. There is nothing, no hill that we cannot climb, no hill that Christ cannot go with you, no depth nor height that He cannot rescue you. Turn your life back over to the Lord. Or turn your life to the Lord. Whatever the needs may be this morning, if you feel that you're subject to the Lord's invitation, why don't you come as we stand? and as we say.